to this week's edition of KPSA. We're going to start by celebrating the success and dedication of our athletes by celebrating our March Warriors of the Month. Senior volleyball captain Nicole Coughlin is leading the team on many levels. She has accumulated the most kills so far this season, and her coach describes her as consistent and calm under pressure, and says she rarely has a bad game. She is a second year captain and a true leader on the team. I was definitely like shocked at first. Um, I think it was really nice. To, it felt like hard work really paid off from all the years playing, so it was really nice. Um, I think that everyone's just really excited and we definitely um, had plans to be undefeated. Obviously that didn't happen, but we were able to come back and beat Franklin, which was like a huge upset for us. And um, I think that really motivated everyone on the team and the energy is just high all the time in practice and in games. Um, well, I think for, for volleyball, like it's, it's by point by point. So I just know that like we can go on a run if they went on a run and um, I just take every like game point by point because I know that we can get the ball back. I'm definitely just working hard in practice and keep doing what we're doing. Our volleyball team is on a winning streak and they are tied with Franklin at the top of the hawk and with just three games left in the regular season it's crunch time. So we're definitely an experienced team. We have like seven seniors who are all on varsity last year and we're all we all get to play this year which is awesome. Um, we def all the younger girls who we have some sophomores and we have mostly juniors. Um, they're all awesome. They're great players and they always come to practice and work hard, which is awesome and which is exactly what we needed for the team. Football senior Mikey Malatesta was also selected as Warrior of the Month. Coach Lee says this kid is a beast. It has been a strange season with plenty of excuses to grab as to why kids might not be able to perform at their best. But then there's Mikey, who has come into the season in great shape and passion to compete like each week is the Super Bowl. He does not come off the field. He plays middle linebacker, responsible for making all our calls and putting us in the correct defense based on the opponent's offensive formation. He plays fullback on offense, leading the way as a blocker and also running the ball like a man possessed. He's on kick return, punt return, kickoff, and punt teams as well. Coach Lee says he is the heart and soul of our team. I'm just really happy that we were able to have a season to begin with. I had my doubts like earlier at the beginning of the school year that we weren't even going to have one. So I'm happy we were able to get a season together. I think our teams were, were a little disappointed that we're not undefeated and we lost our last one, but it's all right. Yeah, we're really working hard and we're hoping we'll have a bounce back week. I went to leave for school and I saw the Warrior of the Month on my front lawn. I was pretty excited about that, not going to lie. I was just, like happy. But like all my hard work finally paid off. I think like everyone's really close still and that we like work hard together and that we're trying our best to like form like chemistry on the field but like off the field chemistry is still really good. Um, a little sad it's coming to an end but it's all right that's every everything comes to an end right. We're hoping to go out on a high note. Congratulations and thank you to Nicole and Mikey. Your dedication is making a big difference in leading your teams to success. Mikey Malatesta will concur that the football team played a hard-fought game against Milford this past weekend. Coming into the game, they were both revered as highly skilled teams and our Warriors were 2-0. They knew this was going to be a very competitive and highly intense game. Unfortunately, Milford handed King Philip its first league shutout in over a decade in a 12-0 shutout of the Warriors. The team will face the formidable Mansfield Hornets this week, the only team that remains undefeated in the league. Coach Lee is having the boys work hard, lifting, practicing, going over plays and film almost every single day of the week to keep the team on top of their goal to make it to the playoffs. This game will be a pivotal moment in the season, and the team is well prepared for the challenge. Coming off a loss to Milford, uh, we had a good week of practice that week, so it's important just to come back and with the same intensity, same focus all throughout this week. Um, can't take any practices off this week because I mean everyone is just as important because Mansfield's just that good of a team. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of what we're focused on is just making sure we have a great week of practice because that's all we can control and then the rest will take care of itself, hopefully. And, I mean, we came into this year uh, really being knowing that we're going to be pretty young. Um, we knew that there was a, a few sophomores that were going to be playing um, and they've stepped up huge. I mean, like Chris Cisse on the line, offensive line is doing a great job. You got Rudy Gately, who's almost 
probably one of the top def uh, defensive players right now. Uh, Brewster, Carney, uh, Astorino, all those guys. I mean, we got Matty Kelly as our kicker. He's doing great. I mean, it's really like they're doing more than we could uh, ask for, and it's really great. It's uh, helping a lot, and it's a huge piece of success for this team. Dude, the impact they've had on this team is huge, and uh, a lot of people don't realize it. Um, the group that we have is pretty small, but they're so close with each other, and they've uh, really led this team uh, well in all these uh, past few weeks. I mean, just look at the offseason we've had. It was unlike any other, and uh, for them to keep the team together and upbeat, it says something about them. Uh, like guys like Mikey Malatesta, he's kind of the leader of the entire team in defense. Um, I mean, our defense would not be playing the way it's playing without him. Pat Zarba, same way with him. Uh, Two-way starter again. Uh, great on both sides of the ball. Uh, Piero at center. Uh, Harry Brown, another good guy. I mean, all of them. Zagrodny, kid just great story, absolute grinder. And I mean, it shows that it's paid off. Podium finishes, new PRs, it was nothing short of spectacular as our Warriors track and field athletes wrapped up their first official meet last Thursday versus Attleboro and Milford. Despite still having no opponents present, the athletes posted remarkable times, including numerous personal and season records. Leading the boys were first place finishes from Jovan Joseph in the 400, Jackson Fletcher in the high jump, and Noah Hurd in the 800 meter race, along with podium finishes by Sean McCombs in the 200, Will Martin in the shot put, and Andrew Noak on the one mile. On the girls' side, Sofia Del Vecchio, Hannah Crocker, Isabel Watson, and the 4x100 meter team all took home first place in their respective events, with Leah Burke, Sydney O'Shea, and Ali Beltramini filling out the podium. We were expected to be one of the two teams, and we did. We beat Milford by a lot, and out of we stayed merely competitive with them, which I really liked. Many guys I didn't expect to get points, they really did, and they really showed up, which is really awesome to see from your team. And I hope they can keep that momentum that they're carrying with them right now for the remainder of the season. I think the in-person meets, the biggest thing it's gonna do for me it's gonna put pressure on me. Like, I mean, not in the good way. Both teams split one and one in time comparisons and look forward to bettering that record as the season progresses. The Celtics have simply not seen the spark that they needed coming out of the All-Star break. They sit in the bottom half in the standings of the Eastern Conference and continue to play inconsistently. With the transactions made at the deadline, the Celtics have added both offensive efficiency along with some added depth, which may be the key to a strong ending regular season as they push to a top spot for the playoffs. Hopefully, the recent return of the fans at the Garden will help the team with a home court advantage as they move towards the home stretch. With only the top four teams making the playoffs in each division, the Bruins will need to pick up their game if they want to make a playoff push. The Bruins aren't playing good right now, obviously. Um, if it weren't for COVID, they probably would have won the cup last year. And now this year is just a huge letdown. You know, losing, they can't beat New Jersey, which is terrible. You know, they almost lost to the Sabres, probably the worst team in the history of the NHL. I think they've been a little inconsistent, could be better. But also, Tuka Rask has been hurt. He's their starting goaltender. So I think with their second and third string in, it leaves a little bit of a gap. With all the injuries going on and how inconsistent they've been playing as of late, I don't think we're going to be playing much playoff hockey unless Halak and Vildar start getting really hot or the first line starts picking it up again. Their whole defense is hurt, but they need to get a winger at the deadline. All the scoring is coming from the first line. You know, occasionally Charlie Coyle is making some plays in the third line. David Krejci is a playmaker and he needs some help. And obviously, you got to get those defensemen back from injuries. And you got to get Rask back because Halak's not going to get it done. I think if uh, they just continue to play smart and limit turnovers, I think, they'll, I think they'll be fine the rest of the year. March Madness has not disappointed this season. As we focus our attention on the Final Four, whose games start on Saturday, how has your bracket held up in all the mayhem? I had FSU winning, and unfortunately they lost to Michigan. I definitely, uh, I always like seeing upsets and um, get a lot of them in March. So I'd say my favorite upset so far is uh, Syracuse, an 11 seed, making it to the Sweet 16. Gonzaga just has pure talent all around, and they just destroy every team they play. A lot of people had Illinois in the Final Four, and not only that, a lot of people had Illinois winning it all. I think Gonzaga's gonna win the whole thing. They've been on fire the whole season. 29-0 and right now, and I think they're just gonna continue to keep winning. I'm gonna have a hot take on this one. I'm gonna take Houston. Um, they've, been, they've been drilling their threes. They've been shooting pretty well, playing some lockdown D, so. 
take it to Houston right now. In the end, I feel like it's going to be Gonzaga, Baylor, and the championship. That's just been a great tournament so far. It really has been. That'll do it for us this week. Enjoy the long weekend, everyone, and good luck to our athletes competing this weekend. Our volleyball team is at home on Saturday against Attleboro, and our football team will be handling the Hornets in Mansfield Saturday at 6.30. Let's go, KP. <laughs>